is the first page of People as played by Bill Evans. What do you think? It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yes, absolutely amazing. Today I'd like to talk about Bill Evans, the arranger. Because if you think that Bill Evans improvised this, you are mistaken. You might think that he did just upon like hearing it once, but having transcribed it, it's absolutely clear that he had almost the entire thing worked out and had practiced it many, many, many times before he recorded it. There are slight differences throughout it. For example, <clears throat> here he plays. And here he plays. Slight differences. But for the most part, he has these things worked out. Sometimes, sometimes he just changes them a little bit. But as parts of the form, you know, happen and then happen again and happen again, you can see as you go through the through the chart that it was all really calculated and arranged. Have you guys seen this interview with Tony Bennett talking to Clint Eastwood about the album that he made with Bill Evans. But listen, listen to this. I love it. It was his idea to do the album. No, it was Annie Ross's idea. Oh, well. She told me, she got him together and said, why don't you guys do an album together? You know? yeah. And uh, it was unbelievable. With each song before we did it, it was about an hour and 15 minutes. He would figure out everything he wanted to play for me on it. And and then he said, okay, I'm ready. Let's do let's try one and do one and that went on but it was it was what the public had never heard because what he was playing was unbelievable yeah i love that with every song that they were going to record bill evans went away for about an hour arranged it came back and then they recorded and then he he did it with the next song so it, i mean it probably took forever but by the time he got back he had a beautiful arrangement he could just pull out, and that's why Tony Bennett said it's what it's what the public never knew. Like maybe they thought that he was improvising some of that, but but if you listen to these recordings, you'll understand the harmonic complexity that went into every arrangement. What an album! If you don't know that album, you've got to listen to it. So, as we approach people, realize that these chords, these lines, these harmonies have all been meticulously worked out. Now this song is in the key of B flat major. People, people who need people. Right, that's how Bill Evans had heard it before he made this. He added so much to it. Um, so I'm gonna stop in the third bar and we'll talk about a chord. Isn't that cool right there? We've got a fourth. I, I told you the third bar. For a second, we're stopping in the first in the first bar. That's a sixth, and that's another fourth. He doesn't ever play the B flat, but this is a B flat chord. And what a great voicing for B flat major. This is where we're gonna stop. device that I use sometimes in my playing. So it's like this, uh, people, and then an F sus chord, people who need, and back to B flat, people. But when he gets back to the B flat, he does, he does this trick of, um, well, he plays these notes. Now, now these two notes, you can see them as part of an A major triad, and that's the trick that I typically use. So, over the B flat, instead of just hitting people, you would hit people. But here's the trick. I mean, so this is the normal thing that we do, right? I mean, you can, you, you hear that all the time. But here's the thing. This is the melody note. 
and over the A, the a major triad, that's a sharp nine. So he just treats it as that. So we've got the, the third of A major, an actual A, and then the sharp nine, because that's in the melody. So he, he figured out such a beautiful way to put the melody note on top. And, and he doesn't play the B flat at first. He just plays these all by themselves. Then he plays it. And when he, when he fully does like commit to B flat major, he's playing a C in the bass. Just for a second, then he, then he plays the B flat again. Isn't that cool? So on beat one, he's playing this. And on beat three, he's playing this. And those would normally be beats where you would really want to you know, outline your chord, but he just makes us wait for it, just a split second each time. Now, this is something I talked about in a recent video uh, about playing with upper structures and creating triads, and this is exactly what Bill Evans does with his right hand. Um, so normally, this would just be like, it would be like an E flat minor 7 chord. If I was going to approach this tune just improvising it, sitting down and playing it, that's about what I would do. Something like that. Uh, so an E flat minor triad over B flat. So the first chord he plays is an E flat minor triad. Then, now you've got choices. If you're if you're if you're going to reharmonize your tune with triads, putting the melody note on top, you have choices. So so he could have played E flat major. He could have played a B triad. Um, he could have played A flat major, A flat minor. But he went for the the E flat minor. Then we've got a, a D in the melody, and he he goes ahead and he just plays a strong B flat chord. Now, we haven't talked about the left hand yet because, well, we'll talk about that in a second. And then he does an A flat major for the C. And then when he returns to the E flat, he doesn't play the E flat minor again. He, he changes it to a B triad, which gives it such a colorful sound. Sing this line. Can we sing this line? It's like, um, I don't know, it sounds, it sounds like it's from another country or something, doesn't it? I love it. Okay, so, I love that. When he returns to the E flat, he could have just played this again, like he did. But it sounds so much cooler just changing that one middle note. Okay, now along with it, he's playing this. It's really cool. Now, he takes these notes, that's a B flat. Let's put the B flat up here. And it comes from a diminished scale. So he just plays a, a line from the diminished scale. Except for, except for he adds an F here. So after, then he, then he plays an F, which doesn't come from that diminished scale. But for a second, that's what he's using. Hear how that sounds? We've got a B flat triad over G flat. That's an augmented type of sound, isn't it? Like if, if we were to put these notes down, down an octave, we would have a B flat here, a D here, and the, that's like a G flat augmented major seven. This one, we've got an A flat major over G. I suppose that's, I mean, to the naked eye, it looks like an A flat major seven. <clears throat> it doesn't quite behave like that, I don't think, but, but really that's what it is. And there's our last one. It's just B seven. But in the context, I mean, how did he ever think of it, right? This is just E flat minor over B flat chord, remember? So how, 
did we ever end up playing B7? We know how, the, how he ended up on it. It's because he's reharmonizing all of these triads on the top. But I just like to think of it as a sidestep. Right? It's really nice motion, harmonic motion, to get you back. That's actually what he does. To get you back to a B flat major chord. Which the notes appear is really, really tasty. He's gonna he's gonna play a G minor chord and just go, but he he just plays the nine first, and then he adds the flat three and the thirteen or the six. throughout the tune. When he gets to the G minor chord, th these are the notes that he likes to use. And he uses them almost every time he gets to the G minor chord. I showed it. Isn't that beautiful and simple? Everything's such nice voice leading right in here. Look at the look at the half notes. Just chromatically descending right there. G minor chord here. He's not playing those notes that we just talked about. Here he's gonna do, he's gonna do an amazing thing. This is maybe my favorite part of this uh, lesson today. Now let's look at the, let's look at the original tune. orchestral arrangement it it does it gets us back to B flat but I much prefer the way that Bill Evans because this is like a, a C7 chord that wants to resolve to, to F but we need to go back to you know here to people so he's got this leeway so let's look at it like this we've got a C sus chord here so the, the bar before G minor. That's how I look at this, a C sus chord. Now we would want to go to a C7 chord, but he takes us to the tritone sub. Now, the tritone sub, the rules to tritone sub mean that you have the third and seven of a chord. Three is an E, seven is a B flat, and we put an F sharp on the bottom. Ooh, I realize a mistake. I've been playing it right, I... but I didn't write it right. That's a B flat there. And then when we get here, this is a B natural. Okay. Like I was saying, we've got a C sus chord, and instead of playing a normal tritone substitution, he doesn't even play a B flat here. He plays a B natural and a G sharp, which turns this chord into an E triad over F sharp. How about that? Kind of seems like a, almost like an F sharp minor 11 chord. But if you add that A, it definitely is not. That's not how it's functioning. I think 
it's just functioning as exactly what it is, another suspended chord. In fact, if I wanted to play F sharp suspended, the way that I normally would play it is just exactly like this. I, I, tip, I typically think of suspended chords as playing the root and then I think a whole step down and play a triad. That's how I play suspended chords most of the time. So that's so cool. It's not a typical tritone substitution. It almost is, but with these two notes, he completely changes it. And he dwells on it for a little bit, he keeps it going, keeps us in suspense. And now he moves back to the F suspension. And this is kind of the same thing, right? He has an F on top, but it's almost like an E flat triad over an F for this suspended idea. And he plays the E flat there in the left hand. And then, then this is just beautiful writing. And we're right back like the beginning. So many amazing devices in this. The way that he plays over the B-flat chord every time. In fact, they're the same exact notes that he uses over the G minor chord every time. He really likes that sound. He loves those notes over the B-flat chord and over the G minor chords. This is also G melodic minor, right? He loves that G melodic minor sound over the G minor chord and over the B flat major chord. So from that to this anticipatory A over B flat. Remember that? To the way he reharmonized the melody by adding triads right here. So many amazing things just in this first page where we can see the mastermind of Bill Evans arranging. I hope you've enjoyed looking at people with me. I've had a good time discovering Bill Evans with you today. And I hope you can use these things in your own playing. You totally can. Don't just stop here. Take these ideas and use them as you approach other tunes because they'll make your playing grow and grow and grow until you're sounding like Bill Evans, but you're not Bill Evans, you're you. Ooh, I sound like Mr. Rogers. But it's true. If you take these principles and apply them to another tune, all of a sudden you've taken something of Bill Evans and added it to something of you. And that's how you gain your own voice as a pianist, as a musician. Thank you for being here with me today. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.